Good afternoon. We shall start in a moment. Uh, we're still waiting that some of the participants are joining as we speak. So, uh, my name is uh, Nenad Filipovic. I'm professor of general management uh, at IDC Blade School of Management, and I'll be a host in this uh, short webinar today, which is in a way an introduction uh, to our program on advanced digital transformation. Uh, needless to say, uh, we have chosen the topic um, as one of the relevant topics uh, that uh, all the businesses around are dealing with, um, not only because of the response to the pandemics, to COVID-19 situation. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, COVID-19 situation did uh, speed up the process of digitalization and digital transformation in many companies. Uh, although we also must say that uh, looking at what has been done in the previous year, uh, a lot of companies were very successful in making the first steps, uh, but haven't gone yet the full digital transformation. Uh, the initial steps, very important ones, of course, allowing people to work from home, um, increasing the safety for employees also switching to digital channels, contacting uh, the customers and suppliers uh, via digital channels, that has been done. But in our experience and in our opinion, uh, digital transformation is more than that. It is about um, looking at various possibilities for creating value for the customers with the help of digital technology. So new value creation and value capturing, new business model, it is about using information in more productive way. It is about the analytics, which stands behind decision-making, uh, behind various approaches to the customers. And it is also about uh, working with people in the new circumstances, not again, not only because of the pandemics, but also because of the transformation process itself. So a lot of uh, leadership challenges on the way. Therefore, in order to deal with this uh, complex topic of transformation and in many cases to move the transformation to the next steps, necessary steps in order to create more value for the company, we have decided to run three programs this year in the school. Uh, they come together. They can, of course, be taken individually if uh, a person decides so. But uh, the three topics that we are going to cover in this year. We'll start with a discussion on digital strategy, what it means and how it works. Of course, taking also uh, AI as a big topic within it. Uh, so where are the biggest challenges? What are the biggest differences when we talk about a new way of strategizing? And we will continue with the harnessing the power of data. Uh, so the business analytics for managers, of course, we will uh, approach these topics in a way which is not uh, technical. Yes, there will be some terminology which will refer to topics from IT, but mostly it will be managerial language because we will look at them not as IT experts, but as what uh, leaders of companies or parts of the companies need to know in order to be able to employ uh, digital technology in value creation in the right way. And I said the last one, uh, the one coming uh, as module three, will be the topic on managing new realities, on the leadership job in current circumstances. We're happy to have excellent speakers with us, excellent professors with us, uh, starting with Joe Peppard for the first module. Joe has been with us for a number of years, and uh, he does come uh, with great knowledge of the topic, but also with the knowledge of what's going on in the world. He has been an advisor to many companies, worked on many projects, and also has been professor with some of the most reputable schools in the area of technology in the world, including MIT. And Jackie Moore, the second speaker, comes also from North America, an expert in several topics, including marketing. And I find that very important because she will talk about data and data analytics, but again, she will not take it from a statistical theory perspective, but from what managers can use in their practice. And last but not least, Peter Gillis, 
a person who comes more from practitional ranks, he's not a traditional academic. He has been a manager himself for many years. Uh, he also, of course, uh, got his academical credentials, uh, his PhD. He's working as advisor, as coach, as consultant, but also as professor. Um, uh, currently resides in Europe, but coming from North America originally. Uh, I will uh, ask you uh, to not only watch this, um, I think it's around 55 minutes or close to an hour introduction, but also think of any possible questions that you might have. Feel free, put them into the Q&A session. And in the very end, after we finish with uh, the webinar, I will try, I mean, with, with the video part of the webinar, I will try to answer the questions you have put. So thank you in advance. Let's start with the first speaker with Professor Joe Peppert. Hi, uh, my name is Joe Peppert and I teach on the Today Oak program, Digital Strategy and Artificial Intelligence, the module one of Bled School of Management's Advanced Digital Transformation program. What I wanna do over the next uh, 15 or 20 minutes is to kind of give you a, an overview of this program and also share with you some of the, the content that, that, that you can expect. Um, I also want you to leave with, uh, with one or two insights uh, from the program, sort of to give you a sense of what you can expect if you, if you do attend the program. And obviously we look to develop these ideas over the, over the two days that the, that the program takes. But before I do, let me sort of give you a little bit of background uh, about myself. Um, I've been teaching at um, IEDC uh, for the last six years. Um, I teach on a number of the, the school's open programs. I also teach on the executive MBA program. And I also teach on, on some of the programs that they have developed for, for, for clients. I'm sort of currently on leave of absence from MIT's uh, Sloan School of Management. Um, and I've worked at ESMT in Berlin. I've worked at Cranfield School of Management, uh, Trinity College Dublin, the business, business school there. So, you know, my, my main area of sort of expertise and, and where I do the bulk of, of my research, uh, teaching and, and consulting is sort of helping organizations generate value from, from technology. And, you know, as you probably will know that this is a, an extremely broad challenge and, and actually includes obviously the, the building of, of strategy for, for technology, which is really the focus of, of this two day program. But it also uh, entails running programs and projects, uh, addressing the whole area of, of, of benefits realization. It encompasses also analytics, big data, managing IT enabled change, or as we like to call it today, digital transformation, portfolio management, dealing with complexity and, and technical debt, and, and also the implications of organization design for the success of digital transformation uh, initiatives. And, and one of the areas that I'm currently focusing on is IT and, and, and boards of directors, particularly some of the blind spots they're likely to encounter uh, with large transformation and replatforming uh, uh, projects. You know, my, my, my research has been published um, in both practitioner journals and, and, and academic journals, and including you know, Harvard Business Review. Um, and, and also I published uh, a number of books. And my, my two most recent ones are, um, one is uh, Building a Digital Strategy. Again, obviously the, the theme of this two-day program. And one that I published uh, last year uh, focuses on IT leadership specifically on the role of the, uh, the chief information officer and how do you take the reins as a, as a, as a newly appointed um, CIO. I, al I also sit on the board of a, of a number of tech companies and, and engage in a, in a number of consulting assignments each year for you know, a variety of companies, uh, essentially helping them unlock the digital, uh, digital dividend and my most recent assignments have been in the areas of healthcare and, and uh, financial services. So if we come back to this particular two-day program, um, really I have a set two key, two, I should say three key objectives for the program. The first thing is I, I want to establish a frame of reference for what it takes to be successful with tech. Because I think if we don't have this frame of reference, I think, the organization and the leadership team will, will, will struggle. 
Secondly, I want to give you a language because once we enter into the realms of, of digital, we, we encounter a whole new language. So I want to you know, introduce you to, to that language. And then also over the two days, I will introduce a number of frameworks. Um, and really the purpose of these frameworks is to, is to fuel a conversation. You know, no framework is, is going to give you the answer, but what it will do is it will help you begin to think about the topic that you are considering in the context of your own organization and, and, and surface some of the different issues and challenges that you are likely to, to encounter. Obviously at the end of the day, it's, it's, a, it's a management decision to choose which option uh, is the best for the particular situation at, uh, at, at hand. So with that, let me, let me maybe go and have a look at um, some of the, the, the kind of the content that I would hope to cover over the, over the two days. So let, let me start by sharing with you an outline of the, of the, of the two days. Um, and, and as you'll see in my design, I've sort of focusing day one a little bit more on the digital technology um, aspect. And you'll see in day two, I focus more on the, on the transformation or, or challenges around uh, achieving the, the necessary change to deliver on the expected um, business outcomes uh, for, the, for, for the initiatives. So I will generally start off on the, on, on the first morning um, working with participants, helping them to make sense of, of, of digital and obviously particularly focusing in on, you know, how digital is, is, is changing strategy and, how, and changing the strategic options that are open to, uh, to organizations today. So we sort of address questions such as, you know, what is digital? You know, how does the company become digital? How does digital differ from um, IT, if, if indeed it does? Um, and, and, and also we will get into issues around transformation, agile, for example, we'll talk about Scrum, et cetera, et cetera. The, the, the objective here is, is to give participants kind of a, a base from which we will then build on, on the remainder of the program. Um, typically in, in, in my design for this first morning, I will also have a, a breakout where, you know, participants will have the opportunity to discuss digital in their organization uh, with, with some of the colleagues on the, uh, on, on the program and to surface some of the issues and challenges because this will help us uh, when we work through the, the rest of the, uh, of the program. Following this, I will then explore digital business models. Um, and, and again, this is part of what I, what I will do here is, is to sort of give you at least the beginnings of a, of, of a framework uh, that you can use in your organizations to first of all, understand the, the, the business model choices um, that are, are available when we start thinking about digital and, and, and technology and, and, and data, um, as, as well as begin to give you the language um, that is associated with digital business model. So we'll talk about value chain, for example, versus ecosystem. I'll, I'll introduce concepts such, such as you know, modular producer, ecosystem driver, um, supplier, um, the omni-channel model. Um, and and to, to help us really get a, get a kind of a grip with this kind of the framework uh, that I will introduce and, and, and some of the language, I will use uh, a case study. Um, uh, typically, I, I, I use uh, either an example uh, of a, a Swiss a manufacturer uh, called Beaux-Arts, and they are a manufacturer of kind of these fasteners or screws. These, these are the typical kind of C items. If you're from manufacturing, you, you'll be familiar with that concept. These are kind of the low cost items, you know, maybe cost, a, uh, you know, a few cents. But actually, if you don't have them, um, you're really going to struggle to, to, to build your product. In fact, it'll be impossible to build your product. And what we look at in, in, the, in the context of Bozart is, is how their business model has evolved over, the, over their decade, decades. Uh, we look at their use of data. We look at the platform they've built. Um, and again, we sort of look at, at, at how they've shifted from selling products to moving more into, in, into solutions. They've introduced this, this concept of, of, of fast or smart factory logistics um, and, and intra organizational logistics. So I think it's really kind of a, a fascinating case of a, you know, essentially a, a medium-sized company and how they have embraced the, uh, the digital opportunity to kind of reimagine their, their business model. 
again, sometimes, and again, depending on the, the, the list of participants, I might use the, the Phillips case, um, which again is a, is, 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 a, is, a, is a great example of a company that's really reinvented itself. And again, Philips, as you know, is, is kind of a big old company, a big old successful company. Um, and over the last you know, eight years under the leadership of CEO Franz van Houten, you know, they have fundamentally reimagined uh, the, the company. They, they, they really now focus uh, on, on, on healthcare. They've shifted from selling products to, to selling solutions. And we look at some of the, the kind of the issues and challenges that this raises uh, for, for an organization, particularly for, for an incumbent organization and, and some of the internal transformations that were necessary for them to execute on, 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 on this new business model. I, I should emphasize that throughout the two days, I, I will draw on lots and lots of, uh, of examples coming from, from different organizations, from, from, from different industries, just to illustrate the, the points that, that, that I want to uh, raise and, and, and to really, I suppose, illuminate on, on, on maybe some of the frameworks and some of the models and indeed some of the language that, that I will introduce during the program. Again, typically I'll also have a breakout here um, and again, the idea here, you know, in, in the breakout is to give participants the opportunity to, to work with a framework that, that, that I've introduced, but also to contextualize it a little bit. Um, so for them to position their own organization's business model, maybe where it currently is and, and, and where they would like to move to, to uh, in, in the future. Uh, and begin to think about what are the capabilities they're going to have to build if they're to move, for example, from a more supplier model to a, an ecosystem driver, for example. Um, and, and also, what are some of the issues and, and challenges that they're, they're likely to face? I, I, after lunch, I, I, I typically then look at some of the sources of competitive advantage uh, from uh, uh, digital, from technology. And I'll also emphasize that actually, you know, we, we did talk a lot about competitive advantage from technology and still do, but actually in most industries today, technology is a competitive necessity. You know, particularly with COVID, for example, we all know that, you know, you cannot survive in business today without technology. So it is a competitive necessity. You know, I, I, I look at some of the, the drivers of, of, of competitive advantage um, you know, for example, infrastructure and the role that can play for, again, depending on your, your choice of business model. I'll also look at experience, you know, customer experience. And again, that depends on your choice of business model or indeed content. So trying to tease out where an organization's source of competitive advantage actually lies. And again, to help us, we have a little exercise that, that I have designed, which kind of gets us to think about, you know, possible business models, um, and the possible implications for choices in respect of competitive advantage um, and, and the implications thereof. Um, and then I will, I will finish the first day by, by focusing on the, the process of building a strategy for, for, for digital technology. So how do you actually go about building the strategy? You know, what should a strategy contain? Who should be involved in, 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 in that process? And again, to help us really understand what is required, we, I'll use a, a case study of, of Allianz. Um, and I think it's a really great example of, of a company that's given significant thought into embracing digital technologies and building a strategy um, around their uh, digital ambitions. Um, there's no, uh, there is a, a written case, but there's no case preparation will be required. And we will look at some video uh, footage and video interviews uh, from the CEO and, and also from the, the head of technology at, the, at Allianz. Day two begins uh, by looking at, you know, the, the, the kind of the five core building blocks for, for, for digital transformation. I will explain the, the, the background to the, to the research that has surfaced these five building blocks, but essentially they're the operational backbone so these are your kind of your core systems, your, your, your systems of record. Uh, for example, it might be your ERP system or your, your patient administration or your you know, EHR if you're in, in healthcare. Um, so we look at the role that your operational backbone plays in, 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 the, in the context of digital and your digital strategy. Uh, the second building block is your digital platform. And again, when we look at you know, companies that are really moving fast, what we see is that they have built a digital platform, which, which enables the, the kind of the rapid composition of digital offerings. Um, so again, the focus here is on, on, on reuse of, 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 of components. 
the the third um building block uh, are shared customer insights obviously you know we're increasingly looking to use data uh, both from our operational backbone from our core system the systems of record but also uh, that's generated from our engagements with customers and other sources in, in order to generate insights, generate new knowledge about our customers, and particularly in relation to the digital offerings um, and their assessment of, you know, they like what we're offering, do they not like what elements, would they be prepared to pay for, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the fourth um, building block is the accountability framework. Um, and when we talk about the accountability framework, what we're seeing here is, you know, again, in organizations that are looking to become kind of digital enterprises, they are shifting where accountability resides. So they're effectively, they are reimagining their, their organizational design. So for example, if we look at a, a company like uh, Spotify, for example, and look at how they are organized for digital and how they are structured and, and where accountabilities reside, um, it's quite different than a traditional organization. So when we look at Spotify, we will encounter concepts like squads, tribes, chapters, uh, roles like you know product managers, agile coaches, um, and, we, and we'll also see that you know they have shifted, um, you know for example you know moving away from component owners for example product project managers, uh, moving from missions uh, to from structures. You know they talk about metrics, not directives. They talk about experiments and uh, not major launches. Um, you know, they have continuous release rather than major releases. You know, it's about collaboration, not hierarchy. It's, it's about trust, not, not control. So again, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a significant building block of a, of a digital um, enterprise, a significant building block of, of, of digital transformation. And then the, the final building block that we look at is the external developer platform. This is essentially enabling third parties to add additional value uh, to your uh, offerings to, to the customers. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit here about kind of APIs, for example, uh, and really how they enable uh, external parties to, to connect up to, to some of the, the, the services that you have uh, exposed to, uh, to, the, to the external world. I'll also then introduce a, a portfolio uh, to you know, help you manage your digital investments. And, and, and the basic proposition here is that not all investments in technology make the same contribution to the success of, of the organization. Um, and, and based on this premise, we look at the different management approaches to managing the different categories of investments that companies make in, in, in technology. And really to help you know, get to grips with this uh, framework in the context of your own organization, we will have a little uh, kind of break, breakout exercise, which, which kind of gives you the, the opportunity to apply some, some of the ideas in, in, in the context of your, your own particular business. The final afternoon really is focusing on, on um, digital transformation and particularly on leadership, because at the end of the day, you know, digital transformation is not really a tech issue. It's, it's really a leadership issue. So we, we look at the you know, leadership required to successfully deliver on, on, on a digital strategy. Um, and again, I typically will use a case study here of, of in this case of a bank, a DBS Bank in Singapore, which for me is probably the best example I've come across of, a, of an organization that has really managed to transform itself into what I could, would consider kind of a, a digital enterprise. Um, you know, they, but they've been at this now for the last 11 years. Um, so we'll have a look in detail at, at, at what they did, the challenges that they, that they faced. Um, and this will include some, some video interviews with some key protagonists in the DBS story. So the CEO, the head of technology, um, the chief innovation officer, and, and a couple of uh, people leading some of the, the, biz, the business areas. Um, and then the, the final session of the program will look at the, the different pathways to digital business transformation. So if you want to become a kind of a future ready organization, what are the paths that you can follow? Um, and, and essentially from the research that we've done, there are four generic journeys. Uh, and what I want to do is to share these four journeys with you to describe them 
I want to surface um, the challenges. So depending on which journey your organization might choose, it, it's, it's going to encounter particular challenges. You know, what are the implications of those challenges and, and how might you overcome some of those challenges? Um, and then we will finish off the, the two days by trying to pull out some of the some of the, some of the, the key the key takeaways. So that's just that kind of a quick run through the, um, the, 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 the program kind of to give you a sense of it, the structure, a sense of the, 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 con the content and also a sense of the didactics uh, that you can expect uh, if you were to attend the, uh, the, the program. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's matching the capabilities of technology with, with business opportunities and building a, a, a strategy for, for, for that. So in, in, you know, in, in today's digital world, we know that you know the world's most valuable resource is no, is no longer oil; it's data, um, it's information. Uh, but the challenge for an organization is to build a strategy uh, for that information, for that data, and that's the essence of this program. Um, so by the end of the two days, I would hope uh, that participants will be in the position to start to think strategically about some of the issues and challenges, but also begin to think strategically about the, the, the opportunities and what it is that they will need to do uh, in order to leverage the capabilities of, of, um, of, of technology. And as you can imagine, this is an, an ongoing process. Um, you know, once you build a strategy for your digital, um, you know, it's not a case that you can rest on your laurels because there's a continuous stream of, of, of new innovations coming about new technology capability. Um, and it's as if you are on a, on a, um, a roller coaster um, or a treadmill. I, you've just got to even walk faster just to, just to stay still. Hopefully, I will maybe see some of you on, on, on the program uh, in the future. Um, but I hope you, I, at least you've given, been given some uh, you know, food for thought in relation to your own um, digital ambitions. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Jackie Moore, Professor of Marketing and Innovation at the University of Montana. My main area of expertise is in studying how businesses harness the power of technological innovations to grow and deliver value to their customers. I had the privilege of teaching at the IEDC-led School of Management in May 2019. And I found it to be a wonderfully creative and dynamic environment filled with vibrant people and energy. A key technological innovation companies are grappling with today is data analytics. In this 15 minute webinar, I will introduce you to the content of the upcoming seminar in May, Business Analytics for Managers. This is module two in the Advanced Digital Transformation Program. Companies realize that there is value to be found in data analytics. In the seminal Harvard Business Review article by McAfee and Bryn Yolfson, their study showed companies in the top third of their industry in the use of data-driven decision-making were 5% more productive and 6% more profitable than their competitors. Clearly big data offers the potential to transform business. Yet studies show that a majority of companies fail to succeed in their data science initiatives. So the question is, how can companies successfully harness this value? A first challenge that has been identified in the literature is that the lexicon of data science is thrown about casually in business, but there is a lacking of a shared understanding of the dimensions of data science. And without this shared understanding, it's easy for communication to go sideways. So one of the first tasks in the seminar in May is just to provide a basic foundational understanding to ensure that when we use these terms that we're all using them in the same way. 
In addition, studies show that there are many gaps between the potential value of data and how companies use that. As you can see here, many companies are swamped with a growing supply of data, which doesn't match their ability to use that data effectively. And as a result, the potential value that data can provide is not realized by many companies. And these gaps are exacerbated by the way technical personnel communicate and the way decision makers communicate. And bridging that gap is also a key component that needs to be addressed. Interestingly, a study by McKinsey in 2018 showed that there are three categories of analytics users. And by users, I mean companies. Companies classified their, excuse me, respondents classified their company by whether they had a significant use of analytics to drive innovation initiatives in their company compared to those that relied on data very minimally. And then there was a middle group that used some data to support existing business initiatives. As you can see from this breakout, only 20% of companies reported a significant use of analytics in driving their business growth. A full one third reported only limited capabilities and the remaining approximately 50% used analytics to track and support existing KPIs, but they felt like they weren't getting the full value. It's interesting to see that the challenges in harnessing the power of data analytics can be both technical as well as managerial. But this slide shows that the managerial challenges oftentimes are the most significant. As a result, in the webinar today, I'll be talking briefly about what these challenges are as a way to explain what some of the topics are that the seminar in May will be covering. The first challenge identified consistently, and I'm pulling these uh, quotes today from an article in McKinsey, 10 red flags signaling your analytics program will fail, is that many executives do lack a good understanding of advanced analytics. And as a result, it's very difficult to have the leadership and vision that is required at the top. The solution is to help leaders not only understand those advanced analytics, but also to help them build a formal strategy for developing that capability in their organizations and then scaling it. In the seminar in May, we will be spending a devoted chunk of time to developing a formal strategy based on a vision for analytics in your company. A second challenge is with respect to the talent on the data science team. There's a really nice article in the Harvard Business Review titled, Don't Let Big Data Bury Your Brand. And the quote is, the numbers get you only so far. After that, it's about getting the people right. And to that, I would add these communication skills that are so critical. We will be talking in the class in May about a tapestry of skills that are required for an effective data analytics team. And one of those key skills that we'll be highlighting is the role of the data translator that builds the bridge between the technical aspects of data science and the business execution of those insights. A third key challenge identified consistently is how to structure the data analytics initiative. The article uh, building the AI powered organization in Harvard Business Review in 2019 discusses using a hub and spoke system to help deploy the data science initiatives 
in the business units where they can add the most value. So we will be talking about the pros and cons of various structural approaches to data science and how that affects the ability to successfully harness the insights. A fourth challenge consistently identified revolves around the ethical, social, and regulatory concerns. Any seminar on data analytics would be missing a key component if we didn't explicitly address data privacy, data security, governance, and stewardship. This will be part of the course where we talk about privacy policies, the extent to which they provide a clear and transparent way for your organization to move forward, and then how it translates into the trust advantage in using data. A fifth challenge consistently identified is not just the strategy and structure of a data science team, but the culture of data-driven decision-making that permeates the organization. And again, this quote from Why Data Culture Matters, a McKinsey article says that the human aspect is the biggest obstacle not the technology piece. And this is the obstacle to realizing the value that data analytics can offer. And again, culture is established at the top. So we'll revisit the role of leaders in establishing a data-driven decision-making culture, and then how that helps diffuse the data insights throughout the organization. Clearly, people are motivated by internal processes and reward systems, and that also is a key element of culture that signals what values and beliefs and behaviors are valued. And then again, this infrastructure that is based on technology that allows the democratization of using the data. Culture is so important that I wanted to highlight an additional aspect about culture. The article Building the AI Powered Organization clearly explicates the leader's role in cultivating a data-driven culture. And I pulled out just a couple insights that resonated with my experience in working with companies in this regard that this existential imperative of either using data or failing is very compelling. The cost of building a data science team is high. The value is latent and the ROI is not known. Yet the opportunity cost of not investing in that data science capability does doom a company to failure ultimately. And so overcoming this existential imperative means that the strategy to help develop this culture can be somewhat paradoxical. And I highlight, highlighted just a few paradoxes here. This idea of aligning AI initiatives with the very cultural values that seem like obstacles. For example, taking a team that perhaps their working knowledge and skills and capabilities are actually threatened or undermined by artificial intelligence, according to this article, is actually the place where the company should start. And again, that's a paradox. This article also has evidence that shows that when companies spend as much of their data science budget on training, integration and adoption as they did on the technological infrastructure leads to a more fully based data-driven capability. And all of this requires balancing feasibility, the investment and the time to realize that investment. Ultimately, the objective is to reach what Ibrahim Goskin, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name correctly, who was the data analytics uh, kind of visionary at Maersk, the shipping company. I love this quote. Now that our data is democratized, 
we see a lot of oxygen in the organization, a lot of excitement about what is possible and the innovation that's possible because data applied to business problems creates innovation. And now our people have the ability to act on their innovative ideas and create value. So this is the ideal that I would like us to achieve after the seminar that you will be taking with me in May. More specifically, the seminar will cover learning best practices to lead your data science initiatives, building a strategy to harness data analytics, creating a data-driven culture, and importantly, avoiding the risks and the unintended consequences that we do see traps companies as they move forward. Um, so we'll examine those risks. Now I have to tell you, I cannot promise that you too will ride away on magic flying unicorns after the seminar, but I can promise that you will gain valuable knowledge to guide your teams you will learn from case studies and generally have the opportunity to interact with your peers to learn how their companies are addressing these challenges. I look forward to the opportunity to teach again at the Bled School of Management, although in a virtual format this May. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dr. Peter Gillis and uh, talking to you about digital transformation and the new reality. And I had to think about the weather outside today. And maybe you can see it behind me, it's a little snowy. And this is what the great professor at Harvard of organizational behavior, Fritz Ruthlisberger, talked about uh, in his book, The Elusive Phenomena. And that is, the knowledge of and knowledge of acquaintance with. Right now you can look behind me and you can have knowledge of the fact that it's pretty cold outside. Um, it, things look pretty much the same. Uh, cars have roughly the same shape. Uh, trees and bushes have roughly the same shape. You know where they are. They didn't change where they were positioned. But there's something different. Yeah, and it's a little snow on top of them. And it's not a gigantic difference, yeah? So, you know, how much, how much difference could that really possibly be? So we have knowledge of. Snow is covering things. We know what snow is. We, we know its properties. And uh, we understand it pretty well. But that's just what Fritz Ruthlisberger was getting at, is that once you've understood something, once you have knowledge of, <clears throat> it's knowledge of acquaintance with. It's actually getting out here and having, having the snow get on your glasses and your hair and your camera. Um, the things in my backyard, in this example, are pretty much the same. The, the bird feeder um, there is... Uh, just covered with a little bit of snow, and I can blow it off very easily. The, the windowsills here are covered with this a little snow, and we can take this and I can just, you know, I can bring it back to how it was, except now my hand is freezing, and I am freezing, and I am extremely miserable. But you say there's only been a small change to the environment outside. Well, these small changes, we can have, again, knowledge of them, but knowledge of acquaintance with brings a whole <laughs> new level of misery. And these are the kind of things we need to talk about in managing the new reality. Oh, I've got to get back inside. Oh, dearie me. Oh, so it really feels nice to be back in something that is a little bit more predictable, an environment that I can control just a little bit better. Wow. So managing the new reality, we might have some small changes in our environment as leaders and as managers. And it could be that it has to do with uh, some new 
media, social media um, uh, a channel or something like that. Or back, I don't know, probably 15 years ago, we were talking about RFID and how this uh, might, might change things. But today we're talking about we're talking about big data. In fact, when you talk with Joe uh, Peppard or uh, Jackie Moore, you'll be talking about uh, actual artificial intelligence. And what is that going to do uh, to, to, to our world? Uh, it's really interesting to think about. And, you know, um, but we, as we talk about these things, you're going to be moving from, okay, here's some cool technology and then you have to then really implement it. So what does that mean for your strategy? How does that mean, what does that mean for how you're actually going to implement it? And that's, that's really important. So <clears throat> there you'll get some really good insight into these things. And when we talk about managing the new reality, then we have to say, okay, well, we, we, we understand the technology. We understand the snow that has fallen. Uh, and, and some people can say, well, it's not that big a deal, but boy, um, from, from a distance, maybe I agree with you, but once I get into it, and once I really start trying to work out the bugs within it, oh, I'm not really sure, you know? Um, and so uh, that's the, again, the knowledge of, we know about snow, we know about digital technology, we know that these things do bring changes. Uh, but knowledge of acquaintance with, once you start doing it, uh, then it becomes uh, quite, a, quite a different thing. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm also reminded of, uh, maybe you remember these things from a couple of years ago, uh, you would go onto YouTube and it was these, these uh, commercials where somebody would get on there and of course they were very casually clothed but living in a spacious house with really cool sports cars and saying, ha! Huh, uh, you know, how can it be that uh, today we're still working in the old fashioned way that you get into a car and you drive to an office and, um, you know, and you sit in an office working all day and then you drive home again. How stupid, how ridiculous, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, follow our 10 step program to being a super entrepreneur and you can stay home all day and do what you want to do. And <laughs> so, you know, uh, all of a sudden COVID comes along and uh, we're all working at home and have, uh, you know, uh, in many cases, a, a lot of extra time on our hands. And what I've heard from many of my clients is, gosh, it would be nice just to get back to work, you know, sort of separate work and home and, um, you know, be really nice. I enjoyed that time in the car, you know, so things can change so quickly. Um, and, uh, and we need to be able, we need to be robust enough as managers to deal with that new sensation, not just the thought that, well, there's a little bit of extra snow in our lives, but we need to make some practical changes to what we are doing. Well, you know, what would those practical changes uh, perhaps look like? Yeah? So in other words, we know about it, but knowledge of acquaintance with what's really going to happen. Uh, I do some coaching. And uh, one of the things that really strikes me is uh, it's very helpful to know the change management models. You know, we need to have a need, we need to have the need and the vision. We need to have a guiding coalition. Uh, we need to make a communications plan. We need to do all that. That's very helpful. But that's not the thing that people uh, ask for coaching on. You know, they ask for coaching on really basic interpersonal things. And I think as we look through the, um, the research and the articles on the competencies needed for a digital uh, transformation, um, they're not a lot different than the competencies we were looking at for uh, re-engineering in the late uh, 80s and early 90s, um, uh, putting in an agile organization, these these things these things once you get stuck into them once you get quite acquainted with them there are some really key elements that keep bubbling up and are where i think uh, we should focus our efforts so let me just talk about three of those and just take a couple minutes to 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 discuss those just a little bit just to whet your appetite 
And then, uh, uh, well, I'll look forward to seeing some of you at, uh, at uh, managing the new reality. So one area we might think about is systems dynamics. Now, I'm not going to get into a bunch of uh, formulas here with Greek letters uh, in them. Uh, but system dynamics is really important, and it, it, it leads us to one of the most important insights in organizational psychology, which is behavior follows structure. Behavior follows structure. Yes, behavior follows structure. And so whether it's the structure of your organization, so it's a, is it an agile structure, is it, is, is it is very hierarchical, what kind of structure do you have? Well, you can already imagine that behavior changes based on what kind of structure you have. Uh, and so we will look into this rather deep. And if you want to um, look into uh, Dan Airely on uh, YouTube, he's a behavioral economist, and he talks about um, you know, someone who has to maybe get a, a new hip replacement. And you've gone through some pain therapy and you've done all that kind of stuff. And you find out um, that you think, well, let, let's replace the hip. And just before, just a week before they're going to go in and get their hip replaced, you find out that there's one medicine that you haven't tried for, for the pain. What do you do? Do you just let the person get a hip replacement and think, well, better next time? Uh, or do you say, wait, let's postpone this and try this one medicine before we actually go all the way and cut into your body and saw out bone and put in some metal? Well, the good news is, is, is a, a huge, the overwhelming majority of doctors answered, well, we would, we would take, you know, we would postpone the operation and we would put in, you know, uh, a regime of, of this new or this other uh, medicine that we hadn't used yet. That's the good news. But then the question was asked slightly differently. So all the same stuff. Person has a bad hip, you're going to go in for a hip replacement surgery. But now you find out that there are actually two medications that you didn't use. So what do you do? Do you postpone the, the uh, surgery and try the one medication and then try the other one? Uh, or do you let the surgery go through? And slightly worryingly here, most doctors said, yeah, I, th I think I just let it go. I just think I would go through to the operation. Well, what changed? Actually, only one little thing changed. We went from one medication that you hadn't used yet to two. But the structure of the problem changed, and so the behavior of the participants changed. Well, where can we see these things in our normal jobs? Where can we see these little areas, these little, these little leverage points that seem to make all the difference? And this is some of the things that we need to talk about when we get into managing in the new reality. The second place we can take a good hard look uh, at is uh, your personality. Who are you? How do you behave? And so uh, I, like to, I like to really dig down a bit here. Yeah? What is that software in your head? What, what do you do when you don't know what to do? What do I do when I don't know what to do? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, what is the software in your head? What will you tend to automatically do? What kind of behavior will you automatically tend to show? And part of that has to do with the system that you are in. Don't underestimate it. But part of it has to do with what is the system up here? And how does that prefer to tackle issues? How does that prefer to lead in a new situation. So there's snow outside, uh, there's a new reality, and so how will you tend to address that? And what could you learn from other methods of addressing that? We'll also talk about your behavior, because sometimes what you're thinking is not always what you do. 
Yeah. And you're holding yourself back and you're thinking, well, I'm the most junior person here or uh, she's much more senior than I am or do I dare to ask, you know, uh, a question where everyone's going to roll their eyes and, you know, so sometimes, you know, what we're thinking and what we would prefer to do, well, we hold ourselves back. We, we check ourselves. We, we filter uh, ourselves. And sometimes that's really good. And sometimes it's a disaster. Well, how would you know? How would you know which, if it's really good or if it's a disaster? And we can talk about this. We can get really get into it. And here's where I really enjoy uh, talking about leadership because very often you've got the cool stuff. You've got the artificial intelligence. I mean, what could be more cool than that? Data mining and all these great things that we can do. And we can even sit down and think very hard about how would that fit into our strategy? How would that alter our strategy? Uh, what kind of commitments do we need to make? And we can make real um, uh, good strategy plans. Um, we, can, we can make our balanced scorecard with all kinds of key performance indicators and say, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to focus on. But it's in the focusing, yeah? It's in the going out to the back door and getting in the snow that you really realize what are the unintended consequences of this. We rarely think about those. What are the unintended consequences of this and how am I going to deal with them? And how could I deal with them better? Finally, how are you going to tell the truth? Which truth? Oh dear. Are we in ethics section now? Yes, we're in the ethics section now. What do our ethics say about how we should and could address these issues? Well, what does ethics have to do with it? We just, we just want to have a new Facebook campaign or something like that. There are real ethic, ethical considerations that we need to think about. And one of the things that I get the most pushback on is about telling the truth. Everyone says, yes, yes. We should tell the truth. And then when I say, well, always, well, you know, you have to be discreet and you have to be a little careful. And sometimes you have to, you know, tell a little, not, not, not a lie, but a white lie, you know, uh, oh dear, oh dear. Are we going to go down that, that road? Because, um, the way in which you attack issues, the way in which you set up the systems that will drive the new strategy, allow you to uh, get the new uh, KPIs, realize that success in the marketplace. If that is based on people not telling the truth to each other, how much success are you going to get? Well, you might really question that. Yeah? So, Telling the truth all the time allows you to set up systems and approaches that are in line with reality. Your alternative is that you're setting up systems and processes that are not aligned with reality. And there's one thing that you don't want against you as a leader. And that's reality. Yeah. So if reality is against you, wow, you're going to have a lot of trouble with that. So as we go along, we're talking about knowledge of and knowledge of acquaintance with. In other words, let's not make this a theoretical discussion. Let's talk about the real stuff. Let's talk about the things that we find insurmountable sometimes that we just can't get out that cause stress in our in our lives um, let's talk about who we are as people what will we prefer to do why do other people prefer to do other stuff can't they just get on the bus and you know um, and and why do i have such difficulty with some people and and not with others and how do i manifest 
my personality? And does that come out in an ethical way? In other words, am I helping my organization, my team to build a new approach to this new reality that's based on truth, that will align itself with reality, or am I fudging a little, a little bit? Because I just find it very, very difficult, sometimes even impossible to come out and tell things how they really are. And we have many examples of this in all kinds of organizations, and you've heard the stories, yeah? And you've heard the stories from the Enron disaster to the uh, Challenger uh, launch uh, uh, th th where people, they just didn't stick close enough to the truth. So a big part of this is also going to be that last bit there um, of ethics. Yeah, what are your ethics? Are you true to them? And how could you stick to them just that much better? So I'm looking forward to uh, meeting you, looking forward to going through this really interesting uh, set of workshops. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be relevant. And not only will you get knowledge of these things, but we're going to interact with each other so that we get much closer to knowledge of acquaintance with. And that will help us be more effective. Look forward to seeing you. So uh, that was a short introduction to the program. Thank you very much for staying with us. As you could see, I hope you, you got the message. Uh, it is a relevant program uh, dealing with relevant topics. It will be, a, I think, healthy combination of strong conceptual background and very pragmatic approach to the topics, uh, allowing participants to use the newly acquired uh, knowledge competencies uh, next day on concrete problems in their companies. And for sure, it will allow for a lot of interaction, uh, although not face-to-face, -face, although being delivered in an online format, and hopefully also that making it slightly more convenient for the attendance, it will certainly allow for exchange of opinions, not only with the professors, uh, all of them highly qualified, but also among yourselves. Uh, we will organize it in the way uh, on our platform, in a way which allows for teamwork, for exchanging documents, for engaging conversations. I've checked uh, the Q&A section um, several times. There was only one question about uh, us organizing MN, uh, executive MBA presentations. Yes, we will. Uh, so uh, my, uh, let me just check. Okay, well, uh, my, my last question to, to all of you is a rhetorical one. Did you like this uh, short introduction? And if the answer to that one is positive, as I hope, I do hope that we will be seeing you again in this program in the first module with Joe Peppert. So with that, I would thank you once again for participating and we're looking forward to having you online, also hopefully soon face-to-face -face in the beautiful school at Bled. Thank you very much and have a nice rest of the day. Goodbye.